All right, this is gonna be a really tough video to make. Sorry, I don't have my setup right now. But um, anyway, this is something I designed. Um, this is intended to lock onto my bowl bar of my uh, bumper. And then this is my front facing camera that sort of won't fit based on my, with this setup. So I designed this so that if I thread this guy through here, if you look, this is a hex side. So I can take the nut that originally comes with it, slide it down in there, and uh, then thread this through. It is very snug, so you gotta make sure you get this little sticker through first, otherwise that'll um, clog up as the threads are trying to come through. Uh, sounds tedious, and sorry I'm doing this on the, there we go. So once the nut's in, you're gonna actually have to thread this in. I mean, now the nut's not in there right now, so I can slide it, but you're gonna have to thread it all the way in until it's snug. So now this should lock on to the bull bar with the camera right there and I'll try to get some pictures to show how that looks. So this is an important step. Um, I have actually outside of the bracket itself, I've thread the nut down to see where I need to line it up because if you can imagine this nut can be positioned in this hex spot, one of three orientations, technically one of six, but um, they're duplicates. Anyway, we need to know which side of the nut wants to be flat forward because I'm going to be threading this camera into the nut. And if I do it wrong, I'm going to be, my camera is going to tighten up at the wrong spot. So you need to tighten it down until it cinches up here and then take a Sharpie and mark that flat side. And then I'll drop the nut in, in that orientation so that I know that when I thread the camera in, it'll line up. So here it is, sunk in there. It, I mean, it's tight, it is very tight. So, I mean, um, <clears throat> I did have to put a socket in there and use a hammer to fully seat that nut. Did not heavy, not hard strikes, but enough. And then did have to grab a hold of it a little bit with a pair of um, slip joint or channel lock, whatever, wrench. It'd be nice to, have, or pliers, to, it would've been nice to have not had to do that, but whatever. So now, and it's not super snug, but you'll see that it locks on, okay? So again, it can rotate, yes. Don't worry, that's not the final plan. The idea is that it locks on, and so now I can get in my car and I can position it just the way I want. And I made it with these two sides over here on either side, so I can now zip tie it, lock it tight. Okay, so here's the top component. I didn't do the best job printing this, it's a little ugly, but most of it will be concealed. But you see it's got a channel for the cable to run in, and then it exits uh, out this hole. And the idea is it should be beyond, you know, below. Uh, it, water shouldn't get in there. So I'm going to pause the video a second, and I'm going to run this. And the cable pops right through that hole, not a problem. And now we'll see if it actually fits. I haven't had a chance to test it. So we'll turn it down here for now. I'm not watching the camera, I'm watching it. So if it looks terrible, I apologize. Um, I know I can slide over from this side, but that's why it's important to use a filament. It has flex. This is P, uh, PETG as opposed to PLA, which would most likely fracture. There we go. There we go. And, oh boy, this is not turning. I mean, it's not, I don't even think I need zip ties. It's rock, it's rock solid. Let's get it nice and centered. And there we go. I'll thread the cable back up in there. I mean, if you just look at it from here, I don't think it's gonna jump out at anyone as what it is. Not a whole lot of inclination to mess with it. And if I wanna tighten it, I can zip tie it. I can always pop it off if I ever need to as well.